Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. I mean, it's time for another live stream. Today is Friday, March 24th, 2023. We made it to the end of the week, guys. Sorry I'm running a little bit late, but I literally just got out of the shower, got back from my workout, like didn't eat lunch, just had to jump in. The morning got away from me. Had a lot of stuff trying to do. The kids' spring break starts this afternoon. So just trying to take care of stuff so I can get out of town, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm doing my best, but I'm here now, guys. Got a lot of stuff that I'd like to unbox for you. Plus, I went for finally my first run in the Topo Cyclone 2 today. I know you guys have been kind of, well, some of you guys anyway. I know Adam's been interested in it, but I got some thoughts for you guys too if you guys want to talk about that. But before we get too much further into it, let's say hi to everyone listening into the podcast and the audio only version. Yes, you are in fact listening to the number one running podcast to listen to in the background while you are doing your taxes. So welcome. And for everyone watching this on YouTube after the fact, even if you got this on, maybe you got two, two screens, one screen for the live stream, one screen for the taxes, you can participate too. I mean, I feel like because of that capability, you know, that's what makes it so amenable to doing your taxes or whatever other chores that you might be doing, cleaning up after dinner, folding some laundry. I feel like those are some of the top. Are we the, are we the number one running podcast to listen to while folding laundry? Uh, maybe. Maybe we'll have to take a poll. All right, let, let's see what we got in the chat. We've got uh, Matthias Ventus who got here early and said he's excited because it's almost time for the live stream to start. And Sean's here, says, hey, everyone, with the wave emoji. And he says he's got an easy five today. And he's going to shoot for 16 tomorrow mm, with fingers crossed. Uh, that's that's uh, ambitious. I feel like, are you feeling good? You must be feeling good. You had your speed work earlier, coming back from the injury, and then now the 16. All right. That's that's auspicious. That's good news. And he says, uh, I really enjoyed having Ed on yesterday and would love to see him come back. Yeah, Guys, I had a lot of fun. Um, I was mentioning to Ed after we uh, finished with the live stream that like sometimes like the chat gets real quiet because you guys are really interested in the conversation and then sometimes you guys are really chatty and that's also a sign that you guys are enjoying the conversation and i was like man you guys were pretty lively i felt like the chat was really fun yesterday the conversation was fun so definitely we'll have to have ed back you know i'm, I'm starting to think you know with the live streams and having guests i enjoy having the guest on especially when it's another like you know i've been narrowing the focus down a little bit cuz before i was like do i try to get pro athletes do i try to get who do i bring you know um, from the running community and i was like i like narrowing it down to like creators you know people who can be pros but who are mostly like regular non elites who uh, are making content for the internet you know and that's been a little bit more fun for me easier to schedule as well because then i don't have to like or usually i don't have to like go through an agent i can talk directly to the person or anything like that so i don't know do we need to go to two times a week i'm thinking two times a week because then we can have repeats and new people you know that's what that's what i'm thinking i feel like you guys are enjoying as long as you guys are enjoying it too i'm enjoying it so you know frank says both the conversations this week are fire so i don't know i'm enjoying it uh eliza says Yesterday it was real fun with Ed, and today's box day. Nosy Mind wants to know what's inside. Awesome. All right. Um, let me scroll down a little bit. Make sure because uh, you guys always let me know if there's something wrong with the audio or the or the video. All right. So it's looking good. So uh, let's get to some of these packages. You know what? Here's the thing. So two two things. Um, one, I have a P.O. box. I got a P.O. box since we moved out to the suburbs. And mainly that's because in my old building, we had a package room. So like when packages came, they would go and sit in a secure area. You have to key card in and, you know, packages could just come whenever. Now we have a house and like if we're not there, packages sit in front of the house. Uh, and especially like on times like we're leaving for the week. I don't want packages to sit at our house all next week. So like we have a P.O. box and I've been getting all these packages and I go to pick them up yesterday. And uh, he's like, I got uh, four here. Does that sound right? And I'm like, I don't know. He's like, you don't remember what you bought? I'm like, uh, people send me stuff. And he's like, oh, well, Jimmy, and this this UPS store, um, it's this one guy who is probably a little bit older than me. And what looks like is he, like his son or his nephew and a bunch of his nephew's friends. Because it's a bunch of like high school, college age boys that work there all the time. And then there's one like super, super, super old dog. Uh, old golden retriever who's got to be like 15, 16 years old. And that's usually the store. Sometimes there's another older dude that's there. 
but he's like, Jimmy, and I don't know, his name wasn't Jimmy, but he's like, Jimmy tells me you're on TikTok. And I'm like, well, I'm on YouTube. And he's like, oh, really? Uh, is that why you get all these packages? I'm like, yeah, that's, that's why I don't know like what's coming sometimes. And uh, he's like, oh, okay. He's like, you just review, like, he's like, would you like make videos about it? I'm like, yeah, I review stuff. And he's like, uh, like anything or, or like a specific kind of stuff. And I'm like, usually running shoes. He's like, oh, okay. And so he's like, what, what running shoe should I get? I'm like, oh, no, a blaster is a good choice. He's like, is that like super squishy? Is it going to last forever? I'm like, oh, it's not going to last forever. He's like, what if I want a shoe that's going to last a long time? And I'm like, well, I'm wearing the Cumulus right now. Also another Asics shoe, really comfy. So he's like, really? And he's like looking over the counter. He's like, what's that? Okay. So I was like, what does that say? Those two shoes again? Novas and Cumulus. And he goes, what about OC? And I'm like, oh, you mean on? And it was one of these, it was like one of the packages that I had is like, and I'm tapping, like, I'm like, look, this is on, it's called on. He's like, what do you think about those? I'm like, they're getting better. They're trying, but let's take a look at, <laughs> let's get a look at the on package or the OQ. Um, yeah. Let's start with that. Um, and then, and then you guys got some, uh, um, then you guys got some good comments here that I'm going to get to. So the first, I opened it up already. Um, because I wanted to make sure like what it was to see if I needed to bring it with me for spring break. And I was going to film it this morning. So that's a thing. Otherwise I would have opened it with you guys, but it was a bigger on box. And inside of this, I think you guys have all seen it on the internet already, but it's the on cloud surfer, which I'm super excited about. And this is one that may have been on embargo. And I made a video about it at TRE. I'm not sure. There was two shoes that I talked about in my TRE video. And Thomas was like, Ooh, one of those is on embargo. And I'm like, I don't know, but here it is a cl <laughs> cloud surfer. Now I think believe in the run has already made all their content about it, but I'm pretty excited about it. I feel like it's a step in the right direction. If I'm not mistaken, this one does not have a speed board in it. And they're thinking about their clouds a little bit more kind of like scientifically now uh, to make sure they're actually collapsing in the way that they want their clouds to collapse. So, you know, I'm excited about it. It's really puffy in the back here. So I'm a little bit nervous, but I don't know. I like the color. I feel like it's summery, springy, you know? I saw uh, Megan has a pair that's like all white. That's the color. That's the color to get in this shoe. But uh, I'm excited about this one. They're called Cloud Tech Phase. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up right down here. Cloud Tech Phase. So excited about that one. It's the first one. And... Uh... They also sent the biggest box. A lot of stuff in here. Where's my knife? All right, before I open that, uh, let's go to some of the the comments that you guys had. Um, CV76 says, the future guest should be next to Scoops Bear. I don't know. Nick Bear is huge. Not like literally too, but also like figuratively. He's a busy dude. I've never, I don't think I've ever interacted with him before. Maybe I'll, I mean, maybe I'll, I don't think he would come on. I don't know if he would. Because uh, he's got his own podcast and stuff now. And he's he's got like a quarter million subscribers, half a million subscribers, something like that. It might be more than that. I don't know. You know, like I, that, that would definitely be punching up a weight class for me. Um, and Sean says, the only downside to having guests is we have to be on our best behavior. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's good for you guys a little bit too. <laughs> um, Lee says, I would like for you to invite Sandy Napier or Sarah Hall. Um, you know, I I was thinking about having Sandy on a little while ago, because you know, like you know, every time because they just started up her, they just started up the Higher Running podcast again, which I'm super excited about. Because uh, I remember listening to that years ago when it was the two of, when it was like Sage and Sandy in the condo or the loft studio studio is that the way we put it? Their old place, the one that that got burned down. Um, I remember that one. That one was good. And, you know, I always feel like Sandy, I've reached out to Sandy before years ago. I never got, never got a response back. I'm sure it just got lost in all the Instagram DMs. But, you know, she always talks about how she's so nervous about being on camera and stuff. So I just was like, well, if you don't like it, I don't want to expose you to more of that. So I don't know. Mm, yeah. But yeah, I, I feel like I would like to talk to her. Um, Let's see. Uh, Super Unjit says, you had me at all dog. I'll go out there and hang out there for the Wizen Gold Retriever. I do like going to my, my uh, P.O. box. Um, 
Because I do like to pet the dog every once in a while. The dog is so old. He'll just come over to you every once in a while. And he'll just, he's really tired because he's so old. He comes over to you and he won't like lift his head, but he'll just stay there with his head until you give him a couple of scratches and then he'll go lay down again. He is a good dog. He's a good boy. I don't know what's wrong with his tail though. He's always got like a bandage on his tail. I don't know if like one of his tailbones got messed up or what. But like he, he's like, uh, he's one of those dogs that's so old, it just moves slow. I like that dog. I'm going to be sad uh, when that dog's not there. Um, yeah, Ninja Ninja Crayon, Ninja Crayon says, uh, LOL at OC, the same. He said he kept calling it OC until he heard someone else say it. Um, yeah, someone else said that too. Uh, yeah, Clifton says, um, yo, finally found the live stream. Fairly new to the running community. Well, welcome. I'm uh, glad you're here. I'm glad you found it. He goes, I never knew it was on until recently. I also, I thought it was QC. See, that's what I would think it was. QC looks right to me, you know, but, um, and Danny says, I always thought on had good uppers, speedboard and foam. However, I think that's the meh emoji. Um, yeah, I kind of, I kind of agree with you. Silver Gummy says, I got to get Floberg on. That's a great idea. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to try to talk to him. Maybe I'll try to schedule that for right before Carmel Marathon. That's where he's going for his sub 250. So, here, oh, by the way, here's something I was thinking about. Um, before I get to that next thought, though, I do I do lo love talking to Eric Floberg. So that's definitely one of what we got to do. Um, but here's the thing I was thinking today. I think I just did it. But guys, I think that we sh maybe we can all agree on this. Can we stop saying sub when we're saying like we're trying to go like sub three? sub 250 sub 245 can we just say i'm trying to go three kind of go 245 like it's under because no one says i'm trying to go sub bq right we all understand you're trying to get faster than the bq just come in just underneath it or more you know i feel like we got to get rid of that word the prefix sub from a vocabulary it just makes it sound silly i feel like you know i don't know um, C Town fan says, uh, where I go? Um, I think Ginger Runner would be a good guess. Yeah, I definitely gotta get Ethan um and or Kimberly on the show too, because I would like to talk to them. I haven't talked to them in a while. I've been thinking about them a lot though, because uh it's May and the um what's the name of his race? The one where there's three different loops and you can take them in a different order. That one, Tiger Claw. I really, it's coming up, but my nephew is, get, is graduating from. I have a I have a niece or nephew that's every year that he's had. I've had a niece or nephew graduating from something, and I can't go. But I think I, I already checked with my wife. Next year, I don't think there's any graduations happening, so I think next year might be the year I get to do it. And um, here's another one. Lalo says, "Have you thought about asking Stephen Scullion to be on the live stream for happy hour?" I think so. I'm a little bit intimidated by him, to be honest, though. Because uh, he's a pretty intense guy. And I think that's why he always smiles. He does his, like, beast of Beauty and the Beast smile. Like, smile. And he does that. I love his smile. It makes me laugh every time I see it. Um, but I feel like he is a little bit intense. I don't know. You think he would be on? I think so. We we, we have to... Um, make, I'll, I'll, you know what? They, all they can do is say no. So, I mean, someone might yell at me and stuff, you know, someone might be mean to me. That's okay. I'm used to that every once in a while. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, before we get to this on box, let's, that's this one. Stevie 76 says, have the girls asked about getting a new dog. Uh, you know, what's interesting? My, yes, my older daughter has asked them many times about getting a new dog. She asked me like probably like once every, like 10 days, every two weeks. But even my wife has asked about getting a new dog. Here's it. And here's where it gets sad. So, um, a friend of my wife's passed away, um, very suddenly and she had two little Yorkies and, um, uh, her widower has been having a hard time taking care of the, the Yorkies. And, um, my wife's like, can we adopt those two dogs? And I'm like, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want two dogs and I don't want two little dogs. I don't want Yorkies. I mean, although like my mother-in-law used to rescue a Yorkie once and by rescue, I mean, she found that dog in the Walmart parking lot one day at coming out of work. And, um, that was a good dog. 
Sonny was a good dog. Sonny was sick. I think that's why the dog got abandoned. But I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do, I don't want dogs right now. I'm traveling a lot. My wife's going to start traveling a lot more. I don't want to do dogs. Um, and I was like, but let me know what the story is. If he can't find anyone to take the dogs, let's have another conversation. Fortunately though, someone, there was someone else closer in family in relation than us that took the dogs. So I, uh, dodged that one, you know, but yeah. Christina runs says, if the girls want a dog sooner or later, you'll have a dog. I, I feel like it's going to happen. I feel like it's going to happen. I'm just trying to hold it off for as long as possible. You know, I'm thinking like these carpets are fairly new in the house and my wife and I don't like carpet all that much. So I'm like, at some point, you know, let's get the dog, the dog will pee all over and then we'll get rid of the car. Like, so I feel like that'll be a good time to time all those things together. (laughs) Oh man. All right. Um, Stevie 76 to get has kicks on here. That might be a good one to do. I don't know. He's huge as well though. Like that's like above my, you know, class, you know what I'm saying? So like, I don't know. Um, but you know, I I could just ask and get these guys on here, you know, (laughs) <laughs> Ed Bud mentioned Brad Hall yesterday and I haven't heard that name in a long time. I don't, I don't know. I still don't know if it's an actor, if he's really like that. Can you imagine if that guy was like that for like an hour on a live stream? I don't know. I don't know if I can handle that. <laughs> um, Hyrus, Hyrus, you got to tell me how to pronounce that name. Cause I feel like I said it wrong the other day. Hyrus Royal says a dog to have in the running videos. Yeah, see, like, I don't know. Like, if I if I were to pick a dog, it would be a running dog. I'm thinking German short hair pointer. Really smart. Can run forever. You know, that would be kind of nice. But Frank says poodles are surprisingly good running partners. They like running and they fall in. They're the smart, though. I feel like, though, that's the hard thing. Those poodles are so smart that I don't feel like I'd be a good owner. That dog would outsmart me all the time. And just just get bored. And vindictive, I feel like. <laughs> uh, Harry says, uh, Jerus, Jerus. So I'm saying it right, Jerus. It's not a soft J, it's a J. Jerus. Okay, Jerus. All right. Um, let's get to some of these boxes. So this is what also came in the giant on package. Um, it actually came in a separate box. So we got the on Cloud Surfer, which I'm pretty excited about. I think I'm going to. I feel like it's going to be good for logging some chill miles, you know? Now we got some clothes in here. Uh, looks like three things. Cross your fingers that it's all matching water camo. <laughs> all right, let's see what we got. I, I'm excited because I don't have any on apparel. And I've always loved on apparel. I always think it looks so good. Um, but I just never had any. Ooh, this is nice. Look at this. All, I think it's all black, but it's like a nice, smooth, heavyweight type of uh, material. Um, feels like a technical material, but still kind of like in like the hoodie kind of category. Um, got nice zipper pockets, diagonal on the front, full zip. And um, yeah, I don't know. These zipper pulls are real small though. If I'm running and trying to catch that, that might be a little bit hard. But otherwise, it feels nice. Oof, this is good for like loungewear after the run. It's got nice ribbing on the sleeves and on the bottom hem. But I also feel like on a cooler day, this could be a good, good warm up piece. And I think there's a matching pat too. Ooh, this one is more of a thinner technical material. Oh, yeah. It's got um, some ventilation on the back. Are these pockets? Yeah. Stash. Oh, it's got a little button on it. Stash pockets in the back, two, one on each side. They're deep. They're almost like kind of just back pockets. Yeah. They're not quite as deep as a regular back pocket, but deeper than a normal stash pocket on the back of your pants. And then there's zippers on the side too. So like this could be an everyday wear pant as well. Got an on logo on the front. And then look at this nice and vented on the back from like the back of the knee all the way down to the ankle. 
It's got a little bit of a um, cinchy thing on the bottom. And then zipper, zipper entry for quick on and off. These could be really good warm-up pants because then you don't have to untie your shoes if you want to get them on and off. Nice. I like it. Yeah, see, you get a sense of the size of the pocket. This is a nice one. I wonder if these are, I feel like, these feel like, they look like they're going to be a bit of a baggier fit. I just feel like there's a lot going on here, but I guess you could tighten it up to make it a tighter fit with this little, you know, cinchy part at the bottom of the ankle. So you can make them a tight fit. You can make them loose. Interesting. Not quite sure how that's going to fit. I usually like them when it's like almost baggy through the knee and then tight from the calf down. Like soccer warm-up pants usually do a really good job of it. All right. We got four things in here. Then we got some shorts. On shorts. I don't think I have any on running shorts. It's got like, ooh, this is nice. A little drop stash pocket here. And then there's also like a regular pocket. So these are shorts. These look like five inches. They're just called the essential shorts. But they look like they could go from the run to daily life too. This is going to be good summer travel pants, you know, because they do have regular pants if you're like walking around. But if you're running in them, you could stash a gel right in the side here real quick. And I wouldn't use these regular pockets to hold the gel because they probably flap around too much. There is a liner in here, which is nice. No pockets in the back. But yeah, it's a nice length. This might be a seven inch. No, I think it's a five inch. Reflective on logo on the back left leg. I don't know. Are you guys ready for summer? Are you guys ready for summer running clothes? I don't know. I'm ready. I'm very ready. It was chilly today. Even today is warmer day, but um, still had gloves on. I like it wore like a longer hoodie for my run. And then... Um, but yeah, so I sweated a lot, but I was like cold. And then look at this last piece. Ooh, on, on makes such great clothes. Look at this. This block color blocking looks so good on the back. And it's got this little line of dots. Oh, it's perforations, laser cut holes. They make you run faster. And this material, it's kind of like, um, I like it. It's a very like modern technical shirt. It's not a mesh, but it feels very lightweight, very breathable, almost like silky in terms of how thin and light it is. I like it. I like this one. That one's going to get a lot of use this summer, I feel like. Nice. Uh, Asperina says, no, I hate summer. I feel like that's being sarcastic, right? Hmm. Eliza says, no to summer. I can't stand sweating that much. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Asperini says, we already hit 25C in Barcelona today and it's already too hot. Okay, 25C, that is, that's like 80 degrees, right? Ooh, that's hot for March. Frank says, I'm ready for windy season to be over. I hear you. Cheers to that, Frank. Will says, I'm so ready for summer. I'll be working out in San Diego, though. That's something to look forward to. It's going to be hot. Hmm. But the ocean's always nice and chilly, though. So if it's real hot, that could be good in San Diego. Sea Town fan says, "I love summer, but I live in the Northwest." Yeah, you guys don't. You guys, summer is different for you guys. Although, like every once in a while, like when we were in Eugene, it was like a, uh, it was like a heat wave. It got to be like ninety something degrees, and most places don't have AC out there. So, I don't know. Matthias Vento says, summer is brutal. He lives too close to the south. And Sean says, I love the ease of getting out the door in the summer, but the heat croaks me. I, You know what I like? I like fire pit weather. As long as I can have a fire pit, at night, like a fire at night, so we have a fire pit now. I'm just going to, I'm just going to try to spend as many nights. I think I'm going to drive my neighbors crazy. I think I'm just going to try to have as many fire, just sit out by the fire as, as much as possible. You know, we said we were going to do that last year and we didn't. But this year we bought like the town has like a twice annual, whatever that means, biannual, twice annual, like firewood sale. Like I think whenever like 
trees get cut down or where they have to do maintenance in the parks or on the trails, they take all that lumber and then they sell it twice a year. And so we bought like a, I think a half load. We bought a lot of fire. We got a lot of firewood that's been sitting in the garage. So I'm ready. I'm ready to get it burning. And we got a little solo stove kind of thing. So hopefully that will make it so it's not so smoky for the neighbors. You know, Frank says, I'm not in a hurry to get to mosquito season. That's a good point. My wife and I talked about like, how do we, we don't want to spray because I feel like spraying chemicals in the backyard feels like the wrong move, but it was really buggy in our backyard last year. And so we're like, well, can we, maybe we can plant some stuff. My, my daughter wants to have like some flower boxes or like a garden in the back and like planter boxes. Um, so like, can we plant stuff that will be like anti-mosquito? And I was like, well, maybe we could just put some bats back there, but that does not seem like the right move either to try and attract bats. I don't know. I feel like being one of the few Asian families in McHenry County, attracting bats is not the right move. Not right now. Anyway. <laughs> um, all right. Let's get to the next package on that note. Let's do this one from Rabbit. I don't, I don't know what, what's in here. Um, where did I just put my knife? I think I put it under all these clothes. There it is. Yeah, it was underneath all the clothes. All right. Oh, super and just says bat don't eat, actually eat mosquito. I thought they did. Then what do bats do? What do mosquitoes do? Why do mosquitoes exist? You know what I mean? And like every bug, gross thing, animal has a purpose, right? Like what eats mosquitoes? We already have a lot of frogs in our backyard. So it's like, I don't know, like attracting more. They're, they're not pulling their weight. I'll tell you that. All right. First thing, I got some stickers in here. Born to run free. And then it says, hello from rabbit. This year, we're celebrating the runners, content creators, and dreamers in our community. Our goal is to inspire more people to join our running family and chase their dreams no matter the finish line. Thanks to storytellers like you, we can show others what it really means to run free. This care package is filled with some of our newest apparel from recent collections. Take these threads out for a run and get creative. We want to share your vision and showcase our latest and greatest apparel in action to let others know what Rabbit is all about. Cool. And there's other stuff about like hashtags and stuff and they're going to be reaching out to see how we can work together. That's nice. I love that. Oh, some of this stuff is real fun. You know, I've been enjoying the rabbit stuff for just like, they have like their casual wear. Some of like the, like the, some of the stuff feels very like Cali vibes. Is that what it's called though? I think it's called Cali vibes. That stuff is maybe a little too Cali vibes vibes for me, but some of the stuff I really like performance flannel performance plaid. I love it. All right. Uh, first thing. Ooh. This reminds me of like the early rabbit stuff a little bit. Look at a singlet. This singlet's nice. I like it. And then on the back, nice little color contrast. Got some green on there. It's that laser cut stuff. This reminds me a little bit of like, remember the early, like the first couple of years of rabbit singlets? They were very silky. Um, it kind of, the front feels kind of like that. And then the back is cut with these laser cut perforations that reminds me of the PR collection. So it's like chill in the front, business in the back. It's like a reverse mullet. But I like that, it's nice. And then, oh boy. I don't know. This stuff is gonna be, uh, this is outside of my, my normal realm of comfort. These are, Oh, nine inch speedsters. So my favorite half tights in a nine inch in this color. This is very springy. What color is this? I don't know. Mint green, minty, minty. But yeah, same three great pockets. As far as I know, I talked to Kevin over at rabbit, Kevin Laura photo. And, um, he was like, don't worry, we didn't change them. Just new colors. I was like, perfect. Because uh, I've raced so many times in those rabbit speedsters. But I think they're out now. Um, 
So I think you can get them now. They did sell out the all black one, the black ones. They were always sold out. Every time I like reference them, they were like, where do I get them? I'm like, grab it. Just get the half tights. And they're like, they don't have any on the site. This is the next color. I think it's the same thing. Speedster, nine inch. They call it Atlantic Deep. I like this. Hmm, nice. That's a good color. And it says, born to run free along the inside. And the same great pockets. You can fit two to three gels in the left pocket and then the right pocket. And then there's a zipper pocket in the back. And the way that I usually rock it is, um, it depends. If I'm not bringing an extra GoPro battery, I'll put two gels, two gels, two gels. And if I am bringing a GoPro battery, I'll put three gels on each side. And then I'll put the GoPro battery uh, in a little Ziploc baggie. And also, like, if I have to put my key card and stuff in there, that goes in the back. It says zipped, and I don't go in there until after the race. And I just use the side pocket. So pretty versatile. Um, yeah. AC says, how is the rabbit half tight compared to John G? Um, I feel like the pocket placement on the rabbit half tight is slightly better than on John G. The John G one has changed over the years. The one that I have, the half tight, is the year one. I think they're on version three now. The one that I have is a nine inch. Now they're an eight inch. Um, but they still do the double pocket system, which I don't always love because I feel like I'm always, I'm never looking at the pocket. And so you have to just have muscle memory and I don't always have that to get into the correct pocket. So sometimes that's a little bit confusing for me. Um, yeah. So like I I enjoy that John G's trying to differentiate and make like five pockets basically, like two that are double stacked and then one in the back. But sometimes it's a little confusing. The rabbit half tight, I feel like is a little bit on the thicker side. Someone mentioned that so it's a thicker material. It's a little bit on the six thick side, which I did mention to to Rabbit. But I'm like, but I mean, overall though, like it's comp it's compressive. You need it. If it were thinner, it would feel flimsy. Um, so it's a little bit thicker. Not that the Johnny one feels flimsy, but it can. If you go, there's other brands that I'm like, you know, there's like Rabbit, Johnny, and then a little bit thinner, and I'm like, this feels kind of like underwear in a bad way. Um, but yeah, but the Rabbit half tights, it's like the pocket placement is just very natural for me. Uh, so I don't ever miss. And that's important when you're racing. Um, all right. Silver Gummy wants to know, do you like the J Speedsters more than the Janji half tights you wore in Tokyo? Hmm. Um, I would say probably, yeah. I'd say the Speedsters are probably my favorite half tights. You just, I mean, I keep... I, I don't feel like I have a strong preference to them, but I'm like, you know what? Whenever I get to just wear whatever half tights I want, I tend to pick the Speedsters. So I'm going to say, yeah. Um, not that I couldn't, I just wanted to mix it up and try a different one for Tokyo. And I felt like it worked out fine. And I wanted to have some different pocket options. So it worked out well. All right. See, this is what I'm a little bit more comfortable with from in terms of from a color perspective. And I like, the rabbit shirts that have like all the perforations in it. I love it for summer. This is interesting. They got a little stripey thing on the back though, on the collar. It doesn't go all the way around on the front, but just on the back. A little rabbit logo and then the laser cut holes and uh, a little rabbit patch. Ooh, this is different because rabbit has typically had like the little patch that sews over. This one has just like it's screen printed on. And then this material is nice and light. This is going to be nice for wearing around in the summer or for running as well. But I think I'm going to have a lot of use for this just wearing. And one more thing. We've got a shirt. It's a singlet. And I feel like it's not as much of performance oriented as the first singlet I showed you, um, but it'll be nice and cool. This could be another summer, just general summer wear, taking the kids to the pool. Um, but it also does have like the laser cut holes in them, not all the way around, just in certain areas, like right around like the sides for venting. And I do love this notching that's here. 
The notch was also in that black shirt I just showed you. But this notching here, really nice. It reminds me of, in a good way, the basketball shorts that were really popular when I was um, in high school and college. They all had the notch on the side. That was like the mark of a quality basketball short. I also feel like when it's in shirts, I almost always love it when there's a little notch on the sides. Just makes it feel flowy and nice in a, in a really premium kind of way. And then not a patch for the rabbit thing, but like a sew on thing. So there you go. That's the rabbit stuff. Eliza said it's so much mint color. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, I'm going to have to try, try it out, see if I can get with it. Uh, not my normal colors, but you know, they're uh, with this thing that I've got some, you know, serving suggestions. See, this guy's wearing, see, like, and this is how I would probably do it. This guy's got that singlet with just dark color shorts. And this guy's got the, um, what was it, Atlantic? They called it the Speedsters with the funky de design and then just like a white singlet. See, there you go. Crazy on one side, solid on the other. Crazy on one side, solid on the other. See, that's the way to do it. Thomas says, I'm wanting mint pistachio ice cream right now. That's good. I'm, I'm getting hungry too. Like I, I got to eat soon. Um, Roberto Lafarga says, would you recommend tights in general for racing? I'm doing Chicago as my first marathon, but I'm used to running in shorts. Um, I would say like, you know what? Don't try something just to try it. You know what I mean? If you like running in shorts, if you like, if you've tried half tights and you didn't like them and you like shorts, then stay with that. Here's the thing for me. One, I like running in half tights. Um, that's generally my preference, but they are warmer than shorts. Here's the other thing. How else are you going to carry all your stuff? You know, like, um, I think we're now at a time in 2023 where I think almost all racers of marathons are bringing some sort of nutrition with them, you know? And so like, you know, where are you going to put all that stuff? Are you going to bring a pack? You're not supposed to bring, uh, hydration packs to the Chicago marathon, unless they've changed the rules. It's hard allowing that. My understanding is you're not supposed to people do it, but you're not supposed to. Um, and so are you going to wear like a flip belt? Are you going to wear a spy belt? Are you going to do something else? How else are you going to carry all your gels or nutrition or chews or whatever it is? You know what I mean? So like, that's always like, kind of like the thing that you have to consider. Are shorts still cooler than half tights? If you're also wearing a flip belt too. You know, and that's going to be up to you. Mm. Yeah, Shannon says, whoa, I don't know if it's been this busy in the live stream recently, but 160 people in the house. I think the IG stories are good for traffic. Well, I hope so. I mean, I hope that it's like, one, I'm worried that, so I've been clipping parts of the live stream to put um, into YouTube shorts and into Instagram stories. And I hope people aren't getting annoyed by it. I've been trying to keep it to one a day, although I did two today. Um, so it's not like overwhelming. But um, the idea is I don't necessarily want to drive traffic here. I've mentioned it before. I like the people who are here. It's good the way the size it is. But I also feel like, you know, I feel like there are people that are like, oh, I didn't know you did that. I would, I would watch that for sure. I think I would enjoy that. You know, so I'm just like, we're making it. We've got a good thing going here. There's good people here. And I feel like that will make sure that when new people come in, the community stays a good place. And uh, let's let's share it. So that's what I'm kind of trying to do, you know? Mm. Yeah. Oh, Martin Pesce says, I had no idea there was a live stream until I saw a YouTube short. All right. Well, perfect. I'm glad that that's working. And Martin, I think I've seen you a couple of times here now. So I'm glad that... Um, I'm glad that you've been enjoying it and coming back. Thank you. Uh, Schumann fan says, I never see you racing or training with compression socks or sleeves. Do you use them after the long run or don't like to use them? Um, I've raced in compression. I like calf sleeves a lot. Um, and then I'm usually wearing compression socks in the winter, but they're under my tights. So you won't see them. And then um, I sometimes wear them around after a long run too. But a lot of times after a long run, like I just don't want anything touching me. So I don't even really like to wear socks, let alone compression stockings, you know, like that go all the way up to the knee. So maybe that's, that's what it is. Um, 
but I've been using them a little bit less. Uh, but I used to wear them quite a bit, and it's for me, it's very seasonally dependent. The time that you'll see me wearing compression socks or compression sleeves is like kind of right about now. We're almost to that point in the season where it's like it's warm enough that I don't have to wear a full tight, but might be a little bit chilly. I wear it for warmth mainly. So if it's a little too chilly for just the half tight, then I'll wear the half tight and the compression stockings. Here's the thing, because then it's like, well, then what do I wear up top? Do I wear a long sleeve? It might be too warm for a long sleeve, but then do I wear a short sleeve or a singlet with compression stock with compression arm sleeves? Then I'm like, that's just too much compression. If I'm wearing a singlet and arm sleeves and half tights and compression and like calf sleeves, then it just looks like I like got hit with a growth ray and all of a sudden I like burst through all my clothes. You know what I mean? So you gotta be you can't you gotta can't go overboard with the compression stockings. I think you could do calves or arms, but you can't do both. So out of, out of a fear of accidentally overdoing it, I think I just haven't been wearing them as much, you know? But I do like them. CV76 says, can you have too much compression? I think you can. I think you can. I've done it. <laughs> uh, Christine Zaleski says, speaking of not wanting to be touched after a long run. I'm on the hunt for a perfect pair of sweatpants for lounging around. I don't need them to be women's sweatpants or sweatpants. You know what? I feel like there's been a really nice resurgence of just like regular big old baggy sweatpants. Like, you know, I do have like the kinds of pants that I like. I've, I've been rocking this one pair of A6 track pants that are really nice that fit like the model that I like where it's like almost baggy through the thigh up to the knee and then tight on the calf down. I, I wear them like like every, every ASICS trip, you'll see it. You'll see it in the video because those are like some of my favorite pants. But I also am just enjoying big baggy sweatpants too. Um, I just got a pair in from Bandit. They're a little bit on the pricey side, but it's just like a big wide straight leg all the way down, a little bit of a cuff at the bottom and a thick weight. The thick weight is I think what does it because you could buy like the Hanes, like $20, $25 sweatpants, but the th the thickness isn't right. They don't sit right. They don't have the same like blanket hug coziness. You got to you got to get the weight right. I think. So like I'm trying to think of what other just regular sweatpants have I been enjoying. Um, I think I got a pair from Adidas that I really liked. Um, I bought that getting ready for the Nuremberg trip. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been enjoying, like, I, have, I think I have a pair of New Balance ones that I got for the New York trip. Just nice, cozy, I, I highly underrated. Christine, I think you're onto something, you know? Mm. Steven C1984 says, what's the coldest race you run? I have a half on Sunday. It's going to be five degrees Celsius, 41 degrees Fahrenheit, but feel a little bit colder with a slight breeze. I'm planning on a singlet and two inch shorts. What? That's wild. Uh, the coldest race I've ever done was the um, F3 winter half marathon. So there's a, a winter half marathon that's usually held like towards the end of January along the lakefront in Chicago. Um, one year it was my half marathon PR because it was like 40 degrees. The following year, it was... Um, at least Strava said it was 14, but it just, it, there's no way it was 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it was just so phenomenally cold that year. I ran it in ski goggles and lots of people had frozen faces, like facial hair, like frozen eyelashes, all like covered in ice by the time they were done. That was the coldest race I've ever done. Uh, I did not run in a singlet and two-inch shorts. I think I wore um, compression um, tights. And then pants on top of that, like winter running pants. And then I think I had like a running t-shirt, a running long sleeve, and then a running jacket. And then I had a balaclava and goggles and winter mittens for that one. That was, that was the coldest one. <laughs> the rambling runner, what's going on, Matt? says, I love the old freezing Kofuzi videos along the Chicago like front. Ice off the mustache. Yeah. I I think those are I like those I'm I'm a, I'm a fan of those I just kind of like that and you know what I do try to remember remember those moments in races and in workouts like 
you know, like from a mental toughness perspective, like I've done, I've done this, I've, I've done things that are, are difficult. So I feel like it's not just for show. I feel like it's useful to me later. Frank says my first mar where to go? Here we go. My first marathon was in a blizzard. All the snow that fell in El Paso that year fell during the marathon and it was 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. That's amazing. That's crazy. Can you believe that? Oh boy. Mm. All right. We got one more, one more round of packages. This one, I, this one I also opened ahead of time because um, I thought I was going to film the shoe this morning. But like I said, the morning got away from me. But one of the things in the package was was this from Mizuno. Someone was asking about this yesterday. Um, but this is the singlet in the um, the Japanese like calligraphy, which I think this is just such a beautiful singlet. Is this pink? I think this is pink. I thought it was, no, it's kind of reddish. And it's, it's not a, a uniform color. Or maybe it's just the way that the light hits it. Anyway, really nice singlet. Very, it's cool to the touch, just touching it. I like this one. Shannon thinks that it's salmon. Maybe salmon might be right. Hmm. Suvi says it's pinkish red. Hmm, possibly. Leona says it's more reddish to me, maybe. Mar Martin says coral. I don't know. I think it's like a. I think I, th I see predominantly red, but rem reddish, pinkish red. I don't know. And then the shoes that came with it are the Wave Rebellion Pro, which I'm very excited about. Um, I haven't had a chance to test these out yet. And they found a pair for me in the uh, in this kind of pre-launch colorway. Now I thought that they weren't. They told me that they didn't have any left in my size. Uh, let me make sure this is my size. Mm, it is U.S. Men's size nine. They told me they didn't have a left in my size, and so they would have to wait until like the launch colorway came out. And I was like, okay, I'm excited still, but I really like the original or the first one, and this is gorgeous. And let me tell you what, these are incredibly light, like way lighter than you would think. Uh, I mean, I've held these in my hand before. I just don't remember them being this light, and it's probably because the last shoe that I held that was this big was that fake pair of Alpha Fly 2s, which were like 11 and a half ounces. I don't know what the weight is on this, but it feels like it's closer to six. So like half is, I mean, it's just incredibly, incredibly light. Amazing. So I'm very excited to try this out. Um, I'm trying to think. I do have a long run next week. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to bring this to Iowa with me so I can take it on my long run. So excited about that one. Awesome. Ryan Wasteman says, just got my waiver billion pros this week as well. Nice. Frank says, if you get a boo pen, you can make them water camo. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, Aubrey running says I'm doing my long run tomorrow in these shoes. Love the shoe and the color. Love them. I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Um, because, uh, Martin says he saw them on Ben is running and other running channel video and the running channel videos. They look wild. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is that like, um, they've been saying that like the wave rebellion pro is designed for like a two thirty marathoner, which I'm like, really? That's a pretty narrow it's a very narrow uh, segment of the running market to de to um, design a shoe for. And then they gave some to Sarah for her to run the Osaka Marathon. Um, and she's not a 230 marathoner. I'm not a 230 marathoner. I feel like a lot of the people that they sent this to to review are not 230 marathoners. So I'm like, is that just kind of marketing? Or is that like to say, to be like, we designed it for pros? But, you know, I don't feel like Mizuno is really going out of their way to be like, but it also works at other paces, too. But then I guess in the way that they're, you know, distributing it out to reviewers and stuff, they aren't only sending it to, like, Ben Felton's of the world. You know, so. Yeah, I, 
I'm, I'm really curious. You know, I talked to, I think I talked to Thomas about it and he really likes them too. If I remember correctly, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I'm pretty sure he really liked them. So I'm excited to give him a shot. <laughs> Jeru says, it could make you a 230 marathon. <laughs> and Stevie says, it's designed for daddy daughter dances. Uh, you know what guys, to update that, um, I did change my flight. So I will be flying into Boston on Friday. Um, so I am going to skip the daddy daughter dance. My wife insisted. Um, and I like the idea. I think it was Shannon that said, um, you know, plan something special for the girls when I get back. I like that um, because uh, I like to believe in the run crew. I was just listening to their podcast this morning on the way home from my run. They were like, I think we're going to need to take a little bit of a break after Boston because they've been doing a lot of racing marathon training. And like, I'm not taking a break. Like I'm not like leaving YouTube or whatever, but like in terms of like the intensity, yeah, we're definitely going into off season mode after Boston for a while, or at least not marathon training mode. You know what I mean? So yeah. Ah, <sighs> Stevie 76 is always listen to Shannon. I would say I always listen to Shannon as long as she's also agreeing with my wife. When then it, when I got like the double confirmation there, you know, then 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 it's for sure. <laughs> um, Eliza says it makes sense uh, to come in Friday. It's going to be hectic getting to Boston. Yeah, I was just thinking like Friday because I'd rather go to the the expo earlier than later. And so my with the way my ske Saturday schedule was, I wasn't going to be able to do that. So if I get in Friday, I think I'll have enough time to like check into the hotel and just go directly to the expo or maybe just go directly to the expo, pick up the bib fast, try not to spend too much time there. And then Saturday will be a little bit more or a little less hectic in that way, you know, so. Mm, all right. Well, last thing to talk about for today. Um, is Adam here? I, I wanted to talk about this day specifically for Adam because he was asking about this one. Um, and then I'll get to the comment I see from Andy. Um, Topo Cyclone 2. Um, I, I like this shoe a lot. I think it's late. I feel like this is a shoe that should have came out like three years ago. If three years ago this shoe came out, mm, it would be a much different conversation. But it seems a little bit kind of like, okay, this is a good shoe. But I felt like it's got P-Backs. It says P-Backs powered right on it on the side. Um, and to me... It, I mean, they are not saying it's a racing shoe. They're saying that it's a, a tempo day workout shoe. And I think that's definitely true. But I also feel like it's very runnable for every day. And I think that I'll put another couple more runs in it. I did hill sprints today in them. So it's not like or hill intervals in them. So it's not the best kind of indicator um, of what it can do. Mainly because I'm like hyperventilating running up the hill. But um I get the sense that I'm really going to think that this is ultimately like um, a mix between the Triumph and the Kinvara. Ultimately, like what I hope the Kinvara Pro feels like. So it's very, I just feel like it, it, it's got a five millimeter drop. It, it's got a really nice foam to it. It feels very low slung to the ground. Um, if I were to guess, I would have guessed that it was a zero drop shoe, but it says five millimeter drop on the back and it's a topo. Um, so, but it just feels very much like a Canvara using high-end foam. So, I like it. I think that it's definitely going to get lost in the mix this year. But I think it's it's going to be a sleeper shoe. I think not not the most underrated shoe, but I think it's going to be an underrated shoe. The, it's just the foot shape of it is really nice and comfy too for this stage in marathon training. Yeah. Um, Andy's question says: Any goals for Boston are just there to enjoy the experience? Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. And, uh, I feel like there's some fitness here. I mean, I, j I don't want to get too greedy because I just had a, a, a big marathon PR a couple weeks ago. Um, but I feel like I'm bouncing back relatively quickly. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking at least right now, um, I'm probably going to line up with the 255 guys for Boston. I might change my ideas. Like, let's see, give me another week and we'll see. Let me, let's check in again after cherry blossom 10 mile, but tentatively right now, I think I'm going to line up with a 250. If I can find some people that are running 255, I'll probably line up with them. And then once we hit the Hills, let them go 
and just chill and relax. So like, and then we'll see where we end up after that. You know, I like to take hills very relaxed. Um, I let everyone go up the hill and then try to like make sure I'm feeling good when it levels off. And I feel like if I can take that approach through the hills in Boston, um, hopefully I'll be able to enjoy some of the downhill and not get too crushed by some of the rollingness of the last six, 10 K, you know? So that's kind of like my, my strategy right now for Boston. I'm pretty excited because I posted a clip from, um, when Tommy was on and Tommy was talking about running 245, he's like, wait, doesn't Megan Murray run 245? Um, so I posted that today on Instagram and Megan reposted it and she's like, let's go, Tommy. So I feel like, I feel like they're going to run together. I think we're all going to be in the same, same wave. So like, you know, hopefully I'll be able to like get a little footage of them, not from the starting line, but like, you know, in the crowds. I'm really looking forward to being kind of like nearish to them, you know, when we get started. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting very excited for Boston. I'm also getting very excited for, for cherry blossom, which is going to be not this weekend, but the following and remember guys, Saturday, there's going to be a shakeout run. Um, with believe in the run and a local run crew, there's going to be a lot of really cool giveaways on that one. So I think we're going to give away some t-shirts with a custom graphic on it. Believe in the run slash Kofuzi graphic on it. So I think it'll be really good. Thomas designed it. So, um, looking forward to all that stuff. Uh, and Matt says, best of luck in Boston Co. That course can be fast if the stars align. Yeah, I feel like if it's going to be a headwind year, I'm just going to chill. I'll be like, you know, let's let's hang back with the 310 with the with my BQ group. But if uh, weather is, you know, reasonably compliant, yeah, I think we're going to see what we can do. You know, so um, Frank says, "Am I feeling sharper then?" I think. I mean, I'm not. I'm not feeling as groggy as I have been. I've been just getting better sleep which is why like a lot of the mornings have been getting away from me because I just haven't been able to get up as early. But I'm like, I think sleeping a little bit more is important, you know? So, yeah. So I'm feeling better. Um, Eliza says we need Kafuzi Run Club shirts for Boston. I, ha I have some ideas. I have some thoughts on that. So I got to talk to some people in the next couple of days. So maybe we can work something out. So Frank says it's going to be a tailwind year. I'll take that to the bank, Frank. I'm going to hold you to it. All right. <laughs> so there we go. Um, I think that's going to be a really great place to leave it. Frank says we're going to have a tailwind year, but Boston's going to be great. I can't wait to see you guys there. Um, that's going to be it for today. I'm going to try to put out a video for, I didn't put one out today. So I'm going to try to get in like a workout video. I did. I found a nice big hill today. I'm going to tell you all about it. There's gonna be a lot of dry heaving in the video so we'll put that together hopefully we'll get that out for tomorrow maybe sunday um but i next week's spring break so the schedule might be a little bit iffy but i think at least for monday i'll see you guys monday so let's plan on that live stream from new vienna 1 p.m central time hopefully i'll see you then and over the weekend be safe out there everybody thanks